On slide 106, I turn to uh, a categorical outcome. I'm going to take the example of negative affect, where earlier we saw this histogram with a very strong floor effect, 60% at the lowest value. And we also see a sharp drop off towards a long tail. Treating the variable as continuous will lead to model misclassification of linear models such as those used with DSEM. And that typically causes underestimated regression slopes. So the question is, what do you do with variables like this, which tend to appear quite frequently? Well, in this case, maybe you should just simply dichotomize the variable or trichotomize it using three categories. Or maybe you should treat it as censored, a continuous variable that's uh, censored at the lowest point, or a two-part model as we have described in M plus Web Talk 4, part 2, where I go through two-part modeling for both continuous and categorical outcomes. But censored and two-part really do require a little bit more people out in the tail. I don't think that's suitable in this case. So I'm going to stay with dichotomizing the variable. If you do that, you can fall back on the uh, original paper by Asparahov and others in uh, the SEM journal, the original dynamic structural equation modeling paper, where there was a section on uh, working with categorical Y variables, where we assumed the normally distributed continuous latent response variables that we call Y star underlying these categorical observed variables. And when you do that, then you have a continuous variable for which regular linear models are relevant. So you apply DSEM to the Y stars in instead of to the Ys. So then you are at least not making an obvious, clear specification error. Uh, the underlying normality of the Y stars may be in question, but that's uh, at least not as egregious as the uh, assumption of continuous variable. I should mention that censored is not yet in uh, M plus uh, DSEM. It probably will come. Two part is in there. Nominal and count are not available for DSEM either. So here's an input for the binary case, dichotomizing NA. Uh, first of all, we delete a lot of individuals that don't change over time in negative affect. <coughs> Many more people of that kind for uh, negative affect than for positive affect. And then we declare as categorical a uh, binary version of the negative affect variable. And we specify a lagged model for both the continuous PA and the negative, sorry, and the binary Nabin variable. In define then we create the dichotomization by saying if NA is greater than 1, greater than the floor, then Nabin, the, ne the binary one, is 1. Otherwise, it is zero. An alternative to that is to use the cut function, cutting the variable at one and keeping the variable name NA. So depending on how you want to proceed. So I chose the one that's bolded. And this is the same. The analysis is the same. And the model is just uh, extended a little bit. So P, so we do a cross lag model here. PA on PA ampersand 1 and the binary ampersand 1. So that's regressed on the uh, Y star for behind the binary at the previous time point. And then we regress Nabin on its previous value, the auto regression, and the previous value for p positive affect and then we correlate the random effects on between. Very simple to specify. And here are the results, <coughs> standardized within level results. And just to remind you, the original NA treated as continuous would give you um, this result, that is the cross-legged effect of NA on to PA is very, very small and insignificant. The cross-legged effect of PA on NA 
is significant but also very small. Higher the PA at the previous time point, the lower the negative effect on the next time point, but very small effect. Now, <clears throat> once again, those values are probably uh, distorted by the misspecification of a linear model for this variable Na. So now when we dichotomize it instead, look at these effects. Much larger effect of the binary negative affect on PA, significant, and also larger for PA on negative affect. So there you avoid the uh, underestimation and get more trustworthy results. So that's a simple remedy for a strong floor effect. Now, what about um, adding some random effects for this binary negative affect variable? Well, let's add random uh, residual variances and random a random correlation. How does that look? Well, we have this expression as before, and for both PA and NABIN, and we have the log V for PA, the random residual variance. Now, the binary NA does not have a free residual variance parameter. That's some, a piece of information that we lose when we have dichotomization. So we don't have any log V for the binary. And here, then, we have the correlation between PA and NABIN. So that's like a correlation between a continuous and a binary underlying variable. That's It's called a biserial correlation. So it's a random biserial correlation. correlation. It's actually um, the Fisher-Z version of that, but um, for small values, it's, it's essentially the correlation, the regular correlation. <clears throat> for small values of the correlation, it's the same. That's what I want to say. And here, then, you have um, just the covariance system between, between all these effects, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then we uh, just label the means and variances and the means of that correlation. And in model constraint, we can compute the mean of the um, variance or the median of the variance if we skip the second term. And we have the medium of the cor median of the correlation in that expression that we saw earlier. So you can do random correlations also when uh, one or both of the variables are binary. <coughs>